Hey everybody, it's Matt Schmidt here, and we're going to be setting up your Shopify store in this video, uh, just getting you started. So let's talk about it real quick. Um, we're going to use the link that I provided to get yourself a 14-day free trial of uh, Shopify. Get yourself in there, get everything set up, uh, and then you can actually activate it um, in plenty of time and, and not worry about getting billed or anything before we get to uh, actually having a store ready and set up for us. Uh, we're going to enter our information and create the important documents. Um, install your apps, which I want you to watch the apps video where you see I you know, recommend a handful of apps that you should be installing for your store. Um, and then the structure of your store, um, as far as the pages and everything like that, uh, we're going to reference the MVP video uh, that's also in the getting started section. So let's go over the shoulder real quick. And I went to Shopify.com here. And you just enter your email here, create yourself a password, uh, and then we're going to talk about a store here. I'm going to do. There we go. So that's just my store name there. Okay, so you have an online store. Um, you want to. Enter your info here. There we go. Um, you can say if you're already selling, um, that's perfectly fine. Um, whatever you want to put in here. I don't even think they require it. So let's just go ahead and skip it over. Uh, and then you're going to be in your store. So right now what I want to talk about is the important things that you need to install. Um, I'm sorry, that you need to upload as far as uh, information for your page and for a lot of trust factors that people are going to look for. We're going to talk about your term of service, um, your return policy, and things like that. So we're going to go over here into the settings, um, but we're first going to go with uh, your legal name here. Uh, if you have a business, uh, that's where I put my business information. I'd obviously update this with all of the correct information. Um, this right here is your time zone. That's going to help you uh, get something established as far as like, you know when the clock turns over for you and the day. Um, your default weight here is also there. That's going to involve with your shipping. Um, you can basically skip over any of this stuff. I've never, I've never edited that. And then we want to go to payments. You want to complete your Shopify payments here. That's going to ask you for a handful of things that's powered by Stripe. Um, I have a couple stores that just use this and they do very well. Um, and if you want though, you can add in PayPal here. Um, you can edit that, you know, tie it in with your PayPal account, whatever it is. Um, and then that will get you the option for PayPal when your customers are checking out, which as an option will generally be, you know, maybe it'll be probably 30 plus percent of your checkouts. Does that mean that those checkouts wouldn't be there? Um, otherwise, I'm not entirely sure, but as an option, a lot of people do prefer it. Uh, you can also do Amazon payments, which is something very interesting and I'm going to probably start using very soon. Um, because Amazon's very, very trusted, and Amazon and Shopify are really getting um, closely connected in a lot of manners. Um, and then there's a handful of other payments, including I think Bitcoin is in here. Um, and if that's what you want to do, you can set all of those up. Checkout wise, um, we want to do accounts are disabled. Um, if you really want to, you could set that up. I don't want that option just because I want the smoothest checkout as possible. Um, I would do your um, for last name only. It's not very important for you to have their full name. You just want their um, email address, obviously. So you can have first and last name if you so choose. Um, you're, you don't need the company name. It's optional. Um, you can do the second line if you want. Uh, phone number. I wouldn't. I wouldn't require it. A lot of people don't like to give away their phone numbers. Um, you might have some suppliers that request a phone number. Uh, what I would do is work with them um, and see if you can get past that. Um, if you really need something, I would set something up for yourself 
so that you can handle any kind of errors that um, get associated with delivery or anything like that. So um, that's it for that section, order processing. The only thing I like to do in this section is make sure that I have uh, automatically archived order when it has been fulfilled and paid. So I would check that box. Um, I like having that because uh, it's very clean as far as somebody on my staff or myself, if I'm doing it early on um, in my store, you know, once I fulfill it, then it archives and it gets off the list of things to fulfill. That's a two-step process. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it does save you a little bit of time. Additional content and scripts. This is where you're going to put your checkout pixel, uh, your traffic, uh, trackify coding, um, your any kind of conversion pixel for AdWords, any kind of conversion pixel for Pinterest or in, uh, not Instagram because that'd be the Facebook conversion pixel, but any kind of conversion pixel will go here. Um, and that's going to help you track your sales when they hit the checkout screen. So that's what that is for. Um, here is a bunch of information that you need to set up. Um, and it's even better if you are able to um, have these pages available quickly for people. And we'll talk about a little bit of that. But you want to just generate a sample here. Um, that's all I've ever used because it, I think it's pretty sufficient. So it's going to include your address. So if you want people to know where you're coming from or if you need to change that, that's going to be the address that you use to set up the store. I have a PO box for my business. So that's what's listed there. Um, but I wouldn't want my home address, just FYI, I wouldn't want my home address on that um, because you just never know with people out there. So that is it for that. Um, make sure that you have your business name and your store and your address the way it is before you press these. Um, if not, then you have to come back in here and search and update everything, um, just a FYI there. So make sure that you save something. Um, you could also, you know, copy these and set up pages. What I do recommend is you, you copy the uh, copy this right here. Um, come over to online store pages. Um, so you have an about us a front page and so forth. What we're going to do is do privacy policy and do that. So it's going to put it in a separate place in your store, right? Um, but what it will do is give yourself a URL to where people can search for your store slash privacy policy. And they, there are people out there that will read this. Um, I would do the same thing with your refund policy and your terms of service. Um, and then I would link to these pages in your footer. Um, overall, that's just good practice. Um, it looks good for you know, search engine optimization. It looks good for um, you know, being um, compliant for Facebook and so on and so forth. Um, let's go back to the settings. Shipping is where we are going to have a lot of um, work to do here, especially if you're doing different size items. So what I like to do with shipping is have certain items weigh certain amounts. Um, necklaces, if you're doing like a free plus shipping, um, you would have a necklace weigh, uh, let's go ahead and just do one. So instead of heavy good shipping, I would say shipping and handling. Uh, for like a necklace, you could do 0.1. 0.1. And then whatever your shipping and handling is, say it's 995. You can go ahead and have that. So one item, if it weighs exactly 0.1, whatever they're checking out with, if it weighs exactly 0.1, it'll be 995 shipping and handling. Now, obviously, we are, what you're going to have to do is set up a lot of different shipping rates here. It's going to be a little bit time intensive, but eventually, once you get up to the bigger items, you won't have to worry so much about it. There's another reason why I only have uh, one lead item uh, that's lower or like special priced or something like free plus shipping where I have special price as well. Um, because what I am doing is not allowing them to take me to the farm with free plus shipping. So um, potentially I would have all my free plus shipping items be 0.1 through 0.9. Uh, they could buy a maximum of you know that range but then the shipping is going to be more and more and more. But then my shirts and all my full retail items are going to be 
one pound and above. So the shipping for those is going to be lower. This is where when you get into the the apps video, we're going to talk about MinMaxify so that you can limit the number of items that are bought for a single necklace or shirt or whatever in your store. That way that nobody can buy 25 or 30 free plus shipping necklaces and then they only pay $4.95 shipping and handling. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you need to take into account and kind of work out with your shipping rates. So I would do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Um, having more and more shipping rates if you're doing the free plus shipping model um, and then having 0.1 to 0.19 being 4.95 and then so on and so forth all the way up so that you can charge a little bit more for each shirt or for a retail item. Um, we also have more margin on those items. So if you do do a necklace, like a free plus shipping necklace and a shirt, the 4.95 is gonna take care of the price of the free, free item and then you will make our money on the margin of the uh, actual high priced retail item. So that's just what you want to figure out there. Um, take into account your international shipping. International shipping is always more. Um, and then just make sure you're not getting taken to the farm here uh, in terms of paying too much because your, your international shipping is probably going to be more than your U.S. shipping as well. So make sure that you know what that is. And then you can make a little margin in there. A lot of people do. Um, or just straight up have them transfer the cost over to the customer. Uh, I don't mess with any of the other stuff in here, but it's very important that you set that up before you drive traffic. Um, taxes, um, you don't have to uh, include taxes in your pricing. Uh, Shopify will automatically um, take into account taxes for anybody that buys on your uh, site who lives in the same state as you. So just take that into consideration, but I would also consult with somebody um, your tax accountant to make sure you're 100% compliant um, because I can't speak to the tax law wherever you are. So notification wise, um, do what you want to do here. You can get notifications to your app. If you have a Mac, you can also set that up. Files, I've never touched. Uh, in account, um, here is where you can add some people. This is where I add all my staff members. Um, and then get, you can click on somebody and give them limited accounts. Uh, you probably can't do it on this one, but if I was to add somebody, I can limit their access. So if I have a fulfillment house, I can limit them just to the orders and you know the settings or whatever they need. Um, if I have a print shop, I can give them just the certain item. So you know nobody has full control of your site other than you. So make sure that you do that and set up your correct information there. Um, you can set up some things for Google. Uh, your invoices for Shopify will show up here. Um, you can also close your store that you don't want to be doing, um, but you can get some help um, with Shopify as well there. Your store, um, once you pick a plan, I would go with the $29 per month plan getting started. Um, you really don't have to go too aggressive until I, this is where all my stores are on now because I need the, um, mostly because I need the reporting feature where you can see what's sold and where and the, you know, and much more data on everything here. It's a little bit more, so just make sure that you are um, starting here and then work your way up. But you wanna go back to this um, and then unlock your store once this is uh, here. Google Analytics. If you know what to do here, this is where this goes. Uh, you can do a little bit of SEO descriptions here and help you out there as well. So here is where you're gonna install all your apps. I want you to watch the app video for that. Um, you also can get a theme by going to the theme store. Just look for something, watch the, uh, the MVP model first. When getting started, it's not important that you go out and spend a whole bunch of money on a theme. Uh, I'll be straight up honest with you. Uh, if you have a theme that comes recommended from somebody else, that's amazing. Mine was custom coded, uh, cost me a whole lot of money, but you know that was something I needed in my business uh, to be done. So what you need to do is just find something that looks appealing. And then when you're doing the MVP model, it's not all that important that you have an elaborate you know, theme right off the bat and bring some money into your store and then go out and get yourself a good 
quality theme that's going to boost your conversion rates from there um, but you have to spend a little money to get there so that's just something to take into consideration domains this is where you're going to you could buy a new domain um, i just go through my hosting company i have godaddy um, buy a domain there and then go over and add the existing domain type in your domain add it and then follow shopify's instructions for whatever hosting account that you're on uh, they have great information as far as what and how to set everything up um, and that'll help you get that going that way it's not test store at my shopify.com it's you know matstore.com so on and so forth so that is it go over to the mvp model to understand the structure of your store that's where we're going to be talking more about the pages and the navigation um, this is where you would modify, modify both of those things um, one of the things i you know, if you do have plans of doing your blog that's great other than that i would recommend that you get rid of the blog and then follow the rest um, pretty simple to do just click on this and modify it just as I say in that video and then the apps video like I said back over here you go ahead and install your apps um, and make sure you follow the links that I have for those so that is it uh, hope to see you in the next video take care